In this video, we're going to look at taking higher roots. A higher root is something where we're taking a root of something other than a square root. Square roots have an invisible number 2 inside the radical that's never written that says we're doing the opposite of squaring or the opposite of a second power. Now, with higher roots, we're going to actually see a number in here. S this number is called the index. We're going to see an index of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever it may be. And this is simply the exponent that we are undoing. Just like square root asked what squared is this number, we're asking what to the index power equals the number we're looking for. In the first example here, the cube root of 125, we're saying what cubed, using the index, equals 125. And at first, it might take a little guess and check to find out that it's going to be 5 cubed equals 125. And so we will say the cube root of 125 is 5. When we see the fourth root of 81, we're asking ourselves, what to the fourth power is 81? Be very careful not to confuse a square root, because the square root of 81 is 9, because 9 squared is 81, but this time we're asking for the fourth root. What to the fourth power is 81? 3 to the fourth power is 81. And so we will say the fourth root of 81 is 3. The second example wants the fifth root of 32, asking us what to the fifth power equals 32. Again, with a little guess and check, what we learn is 2 to the fifth power equals 32. And so we will say the fifth root of 32 is 2. We can have negative numbers under some higher roots. For example, if we want the cube root of negative 64, we're asking what cube equals negative 64. Well, one thing you might notice is to end up with a negative number, our answer needs to be negative. This says third power, which means we would have three negatives, which would equal a negative. That's possible. And what to the third power is 64? 4 to the 3rd power equals 64. To get negative 64, though, we want negative 4 to the 3rd power. And so we will say the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Similar idea with the 7th root of negative 128. We're asking ourselves what to the 7th power equals negative 128. Probably need a little guess and check here, but you'll stumble on pretty quickly that 2 to the 7th power is 128. If we want that to be negative, we need negative 2 to the 7th power. This works because we have 7 negative numbers that we're working with. An odd number of negatives will give us a negative solution. So the 7th root of negative 128 is negative 2. However, with a fourth root of negative 16, we want to know when something to the fourth power equals negative 16. We run into a little bit of a problem, because now the exponent is even. And if we have an even number of negatives, the answer is always positive, at least with real numbers. So, because there's no way to get a negative answer from a real number, if the exponent is even, we will say the, the fourth root of a negative number is undefined, at least for now. And again, that's because the index is even. The answer is always positive, so that's going to be undefined. That won't work. We'll never get negative 16. So that's how higher roots work. We're undoing some higher exponent than squared, but the same idea, finding that value, that raised to the exponent, gives us the number.